I'd like to introduce our ne next speaker, Dr. Uh, Amaro Alejandro Baez. Dr. Baez has a, a long um, history of being involved in emergency medicine uh, for over 20 years. He um, was trained in emergency medicine at the Mayo Clinic. He had a fellowship in tr uh, trauma critical care um, at uh, Harvard and uh, did uh, multiple uh, master's degrees in public health and also in healthcare management uh, and policy. His talk today is going to be about bridging the quality and technology gap about medical tourism with a social responsibility. Dr. Baez. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I want to thank uh, Terry and Haywood uh, for extending uh, the invitation and the opportunity to be here today. Um, let me ask the group, how many are familiar with the concept of medical tourism, medical travel and medical tourism? All right, good. So in the process of this talk, I'm going to elaborate a little bit on how I got involved with uh, medical travel and medical tourism and uh, describe to some extent uh, what I think are the unique opportunities that uh, lie within medical tourism for system fundings and something that we call uh, medical travel with a social responsibility. So our objective is to present a proposal of a value-based, patient-centered, emergency and critical care medical travel platform what we call a medical tourism with social responsibility. So about me, uh, I am a citizen of the world, so talking about global health is kind of interesting. I was born and raised in the Dominican Republic. I left DR back in 1999 to pursue uh, opportunities in, in training, stayed in the States for 11 years, moved back to the Dominican Republic, worked on uh, systems uh, development policy, healthcare management and such for about five to six years and then returned to the States. Uh, I currently work in Miami, uh, so uh, I joke that uh, after working five years with the Boston system and five years in the Dominican Republic, uh, Miami kind of became a, a, an interesting uh, a middle point from a culture, from an emergency medicine development, and uh, from an opportunity standpoint as well. Uh, I do like the fact that uh, I love Cuban coffee and uh, there are a lot of uh, interesting uh, Hispanic uh, culture elements in Miami. So Dominican Republic, Dominican Republic is quite interesting. Uh, the city of Santo Domingo is the first city, European settlement on this hemisphere. Um, the Hospital San Nicolas de Bari, the picture that you see on your left, is the first hospital built on this hemisphere. And it's in the city of Santo Domingo, built in uh, 1519. So a lot of people think Dominican Republic and think beach, and vacations and resorts and, and such. Uh, the Dominican Republic houses about 10 million Dominicans, about 2 million Haitian diaspora, and about 5 million tourists every year. So we're talking about a captive population of about 17 million. So in the States, uh, I, I was blessed with a lot of unique opportunities. And uh, I'll talk about two specific very eye-opening experiences that I had. One was by training at Mayo Clinic, I learned great medicine, and I'm very grateful for that, but I also learned the basis of patient-centered healthcare and patient-centered medicine. Dr. William Mayo said more than 100 years ago that the best interest of the patient is the only interest to consider. While working with the Harvard system, I got the opportunity, I trained and worked within the Harvard system for about five years, uh, met a lot of interesting people, unique people, and in 2007 I met uh, and trained with uh, Dr. Michael Porter, uh, the, the person who's actually pushing for value-based healthcare delivery. To me, that was the most eye-opening experience from a health system uh, standpoint. Value, it is the exact equation that we need to bridge the gap between clinicians, physicians, and administrators. Value merges outcomes and quality and cost. So when we talk about medical travel, medical tourism, the things that we are proposing is precisely to develop a value-based, patient-centered platform. So medical tourism is just, in essence, travel. When you have a patient that travels outside his or her uh, geography to pursue uh, care, you have intra, 
So for example, when somebody from rural America goes to the Mayo Clinic or goes to New York Presbyterian or goes to uh, the Brigham and Women's or Mass General Hospital, that is in essence medical travel. A lot of people talk about uh, international, so the, the, the big focus recently is on international uh, medical travel and me medical tourism. Uh, and social responsibility, we just need to highlight that uh, when we talk about social responsibility is the uh, contribute uh, contributions of any kind of uh, enterprise on social and economic development. So one of the things that we're pushing for recently is to change the paradigm from the semantic of medical tourism and focus on what we call the globalization of healthcare, global healthcare. So there are a lot of research opportunities. For example, if you expand your uh, a multi-center, multinational research trial, Basically, your ability to generalize your results within a global um, village is uh, more important, right? So we, lo we look at research, we look at uh, education. I am a product of that. I was born and raised in the Dominican. I trained in medical school in the Dominican Republic, and I work in the United States. So education offers a lot of interesting opportunities. Uh, Continuing medical education and even uh, uh, doctoral degree education. And the medical care piece is medical tourism, medical travel. And we'll talk about how I think uh, medical travel is an amazing tool to actually promote system growth, quality of care, and better health care in a developing country. So talking about GDP, everybody knows the United States has great medicine in terms of quality and technology, but in essence, it is the most expensive health system in the world. One out of seven dollars of the GDP is utilized in healthcare. Whereas when we look at that cluster on that picture underneath, it's just a bunch of Caribbean countries. When we look at that cluster, we, we see the Dominican Republic, uh, we see Antigua, Trinidad, Tobago, Cayman Islands, we're talking about about a 5% of the GDP invested in healthcare. What we believe is that through medical tourism, we can actually fill that gap. We can actually bring it more to the center. We can actually reduce costs over all, overall, even in the United States, and actually inject funds into developing systems like the Dominican Republic. So in the United States, outbound medical tourism is pretty popular, pretty famous, uh, recently pretty, a, pre, a hot topic rather. Uh, with the healthcare reform, uh, folks are talking about outsourcing medical care because healthcare reform talks about reducing costs and at the same time increasing access in the most expensive health system in the world. So to some extent that is a little bit difficult, but it offers an opportunity for uh, developing uh, outsourcing systems like uh, medical tourism in general. But one of the things that we need to highlight is that this is not, medical tourism is not just about costs. It's not just about reducing costs. A lot of people think that the main driver for medical tourism is cheaper care. But obviously in Spanish we say lo barato sale caro, cheap things end up being more expensive. Uh, but if you look at the three examples here, these are heads of state, uh, uh, celebrities that have uh, uh, an immense wealth, and they pursued medical care outside of their country, not necessarily because of cost, but actually for innovations and, and such. So let's talk about three cases, uh, or one case as it applies to three countries. 29-year-old uh, female, worst headache of her life, ends up having a subarachnoid hemorrhage. I had a case like that that was medevaced from Antigua. Antigua has a similar GDP than the Dominican Republic in healthcare, but it's a country of about 80,000 inhabitants. One hospital, Mount St. John Hospital. So because of scale, because of volume, Mount St. John cannot have all the technologies that a country of 17 million people in any given year have, right? But the same thing happens in rural Dominican Republic. In rural Dominican Republic, because of cost, access, and insurance, somebody with a subarachnoid hemorrhage might not have access to the technologies of invasive neurology and neurosurgery and stuff. And you look at urban Dominican Republic. In urban Dominican Republic, because of lack of insurance, you will also have folks that have the same condition but might not have the ability to access that type of medical care because of lack of insurance or, or lack of funding. So what we talk about is that through medical tourism, you can actually inject funds, improve quality, and improve uh, systems in general. One of the things that I think also is worth mentioning is in Haiti, we realized after the Haiti earthquake where we built a network of uh, two field hospitals, so about 5,000 Haitians uh, after the earthquake. And one of the things that we realized is that when you compare the Chile earthquake to the Haiti earthquake, 
we, you talk about uh, in, an enormous difference in terms of outcomes, right? And a lot of it has to do with investments in uh, system infrastructure and the health response, healthcare system uh, component is very important. So by having funds injected into the healthcare system, you also improve the ability to respond to natural disasters. All right, so to, to finish my talk, because I got the stop uh, button about two minutes ago, but since I'm the last, I can get away with all these things, right? Look at Terry. <laughs> now, so we want to propose the creation of a value-based patient-centered regional Caribbean emergency and critical care network. One of the things that we talk about is creating an emergency and critical care cluster in the region. So the, the smaller islands and uh, the many other countries that uh, form uh, the Caribbean Basin and Central America create a network where by forming economies of scale, you can uh, feed uh, each other. You can support each other from a uh, technology and uh, quality standpoint. Uh, integrate existing resources, generate economies of scale. You can create knowledge and quality transfer, reduce brain drain. Uh, I'm, I'm an example of that. I have 70% of me is in the States. The other 30% is kind of staying in the Dominican Republic. So I'm almost uh, one of the brain drain examples. All right. Uh, so to finish, uh, the people that know me know that I, I like art. Uh, this is a, a somewhat of an interesting uh, slide. Uh, Picasso, before becoming a cubist, uh, painted this when he was age 16. It's called Science and Charity, Ciencia y Caridad. Uh, the original painting wanted to uh, position the physician next to the nun uh, in the same angle and kind of morph it, and he separated charity from science. And interestingly, Dr. Bernie Lau, a Nobel laureate, uh, physician, cardiologist, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting him when I was at the Brigham, also known for inventing uh, a little uh, medical concept called the fibrillation. So he said that now the doctor, by virtue of accepting science so totally, creates a total imbalance for forgetting the art of healing. So I believe medicine has lost its human face. So I think there's a lot of things to reflect upon, and uh, uh, this is a, a, a bit of an eclectic talk. But what we wanted to present is that developing systems need ways of being funded. And there are interesting ways through a medical tourism uh, global healthcare platform that this can happen. So thank you so much, and I apologize for uh, extending my talk.